Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. I want to talk about brain blood pressure, or what we call cerebral perfusion pressure, and in particular in, in kids with autism. Now, if you take a, a neurotypical adult, or teenager for that matter, they get a concussion, which is now you snap some neurons, you got symptoms for a couple days, and you don't bleed in the brain. Many of their symptoms they have are from low blood pressure in the brain. What does this do to you? Makes it hard for the oxygen to jump from red blood cells into your neurons. So you have these red blood cells, you breathe, you fill them up with oxygen in your lungs. You gotta push them up in your head and at proper pressure, the oxygen transfuses or jumps into your neurons. And your neurons only have one second of extra oxygen, okay? So if that's not working right, so here's your head, and when you stand up against gravity, you've got to increase your pressure to keep that flow correct. If the nervous system isn't regulating correctly and you stand up, and what happens is you'll feel this like, whoa, this low, and what happens is your pressure dips like this, okay? And uh, it's lack of oxygen that you might feel if you stand up too quickly and you feel a little funny. And it's bad all day long. All right, this is attention deficit disorder. Attention deficit disorder is cerebral hypoperfusion, brain low pressure, okay? You might call this uh, just memory problems, can't focus, you know, often brain fog is, is term is used for this. And in kids with autism, it's a hundred times worse than say a neurotypical teenager with ADD. It's really bad. And this low pressure accounts for a lot of symptoms that they have. And uh, so the brain is not having, not getting enough oxygen in an autistic child. And um, what happens is the brain starts panicking and trying to figure out ways to get the pressure up. And so one of the ways is to constrict uh, the leg muscles. And you can do this by hyperactivity. And so that's where they just incessantly back and forth and run it up and down the halls, things like that. Um, toe walking, if you stand on your tippy toes, you can feel your all your leg muscles all the way up to the pelvis constrict. That'll boost pressure to your head, okay? These kids can't sit very long at mealtime. Uh, and it's because as they sit there, their pressure's dropping. And they gotta get up and move around. It makes you crave salt and carbohydrates. Uh, so kids are eating just like chicken nuggets and fries. Uh, it makes them thirsty. Um, kids will, kids feel this sense and they will lay down flat a lot. I have children that if they're having a bad day, the parents are trying to walk them down the driveway to school, the kids will lie down. Like after 10 feet on the driveway, they get them up, they walk another 10 feet, they lay down, okay? They're just listening to their brain. Their brain's thinking they're gonna pass out or the brain's thinking maybe you're drowning because you aren't getting enough oxygen. And it just commands these kids to do this. And they have very, very little impulse control, okay? So they just follow this right away. Now people say, well, Doc, where's this injury come from? And certainly, you know, when we have these low blood pressure problems in many of my adults and they can be pretty bad. Uh, those adults though have a history of this and then that and then this and all these different kinds of injuries, both physical, emotional, inflammatory, that are causing this to get worse and worse. The kids just don't have that much time to have built up all of that. Why is it so bad? Well, there's some interesting work in, in animal models. And for those of you familiar with my book, what we believe is happening now is you get bacteria from the colon growing abnormally in the small intestine and it will release a chemical called propionic acid. This uh, propionic acid has been shown to cause a chemical injury in the animal models. So I'm suspicious it's propionic acid or some other compound leaking through that's injuring the nervous system and causing this to be so bad. Oh, I should also add, if these kids aren't able to handle this low pressure, uh, they release norepinephrine or epinephrine. These are your stress hormones. It'll make them really anxious, panicky, tearful, aggressive. Uh, 
and sometimes you know the parents will say they're having a tantrum and their eyes are just dilated and, and the parents say it's like an animal and that's kind of what's happening with these children now fortunately if you can get the inflammation down with our protocol these kids this will recover okay and then along the way sometimes kids need uh, an additional boost we use a medicine called midodrine which kind of gently increases the pressure some it doesn't really normalize it it's not that powerful but it can help kind of cut through uh, these problems and they, they calm down some they're a little less hyper they're focused their attention is better they can pay attention to what's going on in front of them so um, it's pretty bad pretty intense it's a great deal of the disruptive symptoms that you see in children uh, throughout the day are from this low blood pressure problem so get on the protocol get their inflammation down if you need a little midodrine sometimes Adderall or Ritalin can help but those drugs penetrate the brain and can cause a little bit too much stimulation but that's what you're looking at here all right everybody have a good day